Hey YouTube, this is Drew Hatton Tech here, and I thought it was high time that I do a follow-up video on my proprietary technology sex video, which if you haven't already seen that, I encourage you to go check it out. I'll link that up in the card and down in the description. In this video, I just explain the context behind that video. That video is not targeted at all proprietary technology. I narrowly target it at the proprietary technology that abuses its power by implementing malicious techniques behind users' backs, like backdoors, surveillance, sabotage, incompatibility, and other malicious techniques. Now, the thing I want you to understand about that is that the vast, vast majority of the time, those malicious techniques are not implemented for evil, because if they were implemented for evil, the developer would have very little to gain by doing it, and everything to lose if it was found out. It's done to maximize profits, so I kind of understand that, but that doesn't make it any less wrong. And the thing is, not all proprietary technology does that. Now sure, there's really no way of knowing for sure whether or not it does these things without looking at the source code, which proprietary technology doesn't let you do. But the thing is, like, the vast, vast majority of us have to use at least some proprietary technology. Like, if I boycotted literally every single piece of proprietary technology, my technology experience would be way inferior. Like, I definitely wouldn't even be on YouTube. Probably wouldn't even be on the internet. Like, on my computer, I still use MP4 videos. In fact, I'm uploading videos like this one in MP4. That's a proprietary technology. The thing is, it's not malicious. And for example, I use an iPhone to film videos like this when I get stuff with the camera. And I use my iPhone to use, like, mobile apps. Because the thing is, since we use mobile apps we more often than websites on our mobile devices. Linux phone isn't really ready to take over iOS and Android in the same way that Linux would be ready to take over Windows and Mac OS. And the thing is, there's also very few Linux distributions that are completely free and open source software. Like, you need some proprietary software to actually do stuff that's become standard. Like, sure, I feel I should have the freedom to use my technology in the way that I want, but at the same time, I want to be able to play music. I want to be able to watch videos, both on and offline. And in this day and age, you need proprietary technologies to do that. But as far as we know, like, those are not malicious. Sure, like, there's probably some data collection going on in the background of iOS, but from what I can tell, it's very minimal, if any. And I really don't imagine Android being much better than iOS in terms of that. If anything, it's actually worse. And the thing is, proprietary technology just collects this data so that way they can sell it off to advertisers and researchers, so it's really just done to get profits. And I think there's some monetary incentive for Microsoft to build backdoors into Windows for the NSA. Like they could be offering them some sort of great deal or they just have some other pressure like having to pay fines, which of course they would not want to do. And the thing is sabotage, like it happens when like a service that a product relies on is discontinued. The thing is as a product gets older and older, it becomes less and less practical to support it. So I understand why they do that because the longer you support a product, the more it costs. And also incompatibility, it's to encourage you to stay with a specific program or even operating system so that way they can keep making money off of you. A lot of times this is done with the DRM, which I also criticize DRM for being intrusive. I narrowly target that at intrusive DRM. There are some DRM schemes that are completely non-intrusive, like Steam's DRM. Sure, the Steam client runs in the background, but it's like you don't really notice it. That's the DRM that's okay. And lastly, I want to talk about like account terminations. Like they're done when there's a breach of a ULA. A lot of times there's some sort of fraud going on that would cause a service provider to lose money. Or like, for example, like in the case of YouTube, it's done to make viewers feel comfortable watching videos on the platform so they see more ads and then they get more money out of those ads. And it's also done to make advertisers feel safe about spending on their platform so then they get more ad revenue, which is how companies like Google make their money after all. The thing is it does cripple your technology experience and it can really displace your digital life if it happens to you. And it also means you lose purchases. So that's kind of surprising that that's even allowed to happen. I just made that video to say the huge disadvantages with proprietary technology. But again, like not all proprietary technology is bad. The vast, vast majority of us rely on it. Some of it's not intrusive. So that's why I'm making this follow-up video. It's to balance out my previous proprietary technology sucks video. I just want to say not all proprietary technologies are bad. Intrusive ones are. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found that it cleared up confusion, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, along with my proprietary technology sucks video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.